Hey, what's up? Welcome to the AV Club podcast. I have a mustache. For those of you that are just listening, I got a freaking mustache on my lip. But anyways, my guest today is Jackson Godoy. Jackson is a former collegiate baseball player. He played at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor. And due to unforeseen injury, he had to stop. But that didn't stop him from telling me about his experiences. Boom. How do you like that? Uh, we talked about his experiences as a baseball player. And then we kind of just talked about life. We just kind of, we just kind of, you know, caught up. And it was a good conversation. And I think you guys will really enjoy it, especially from the perspective of that collegiate athlete, which you might not hear a lot or, you know, kind of understand uh, being a normal student or a non-collegiate athlete. I don't know. Anyways, here's Jackson Godoy. Enjoy. So Jackson Godoy, thanks for coming on. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for fun. being here, man. I really appreciate it. Um, last second thing, kind of, but <laughs> I was I was actually surprised you were down. No joke. I, I was yeah. thinking about asking you. I asked Daniel first because, like, you know, you came here to do his yeah. thing, and I was like, oh, I don't want to like, you know, jock anything. But, yeah. um, dude, so what's it like studying like neuroscience and like how has that process been for you? Well, you see. You kind of get into it you meet a lot of people and uh, they kind of look like you don't know anything yeah and then you just say a couple smart things and then they kind of they think you know what you're talking about yeah. and then it works out you know <laughs> dude so <laughs> you're, you're, in the, you're in the field of marketing dude how has yeah. that been for you it's it's been really fun uh i haven't really heard of a lot of other people that we went at least what we went to school with doing things that i'm doing or getting to do uh so it's I feel like I'm getting a little bit different, better experience. A lot of, I don't know, like not conceited, but like it's it's kind of fun because I get to do a lot of what a lot of people in my position don't get to do. If that makes sense, since because I, I'm at a lot smaller company than what oh, most people right. go into. Yeah, because most time when you go into marketing, you you either join it for a specific uh, company or you'll go if you go to an agency. A lot of times they're like 100, 200 people. Mm-hmm. And then your role in that is like focused on one thing. So if you write emails, you write emails, that's it. That's right. all you do is write emails. Or if you do ads, that's all you do is ads. Um, but since we are, I am at such a smaller company, it helps because I literally get to do every bit of aspect of it. That's cool. It, it's yeah, it's so much fun. But how, how many people work there with you? Uh, right now we have five people. Dang, so, so yeah, super super small. Are yeah, are so it's, it's the two co-founders, and then me, and then there's another one, another guy that's in my position, and then we have like a client account manager. Oh, cool. So it kind of just manages the clients, keeps them happy. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's working well so far. Yeah, I mean, the couple <laughs> every once in a while you get a couple of weeks where you feel overwhelmed because you have so much work. Right. Because obviously we want to get as many clients as we can, but we only have so many people. You can only do so much work, and. Mm-hmm. Then, Sometimes it just feels overwhelming because everyone wants something at the same time. So, yeah, I can't imagine that. I was in a similar role, you know, at my previous job, mm-hmm. but I I didn't do really anything in that aspect of the marketing. Right. Like it was like half marketing, half photography stuff. Yeah. And I just did the hand, handle the photography stuff, but I got to see a lot of it, and it's it's cool that you get to. I don't know how much you actually interact with people. Uh, are you calling people a lot and like, or is it just email stuff? I mean, for the most part, I don't really talk to the clients at all. Yeah. Um, for, like that's why we have for originally it was a lot of, I was in client meetings and having, we, uh, we did this marketing for this one company and the guy just somehow, well, I had like my phone number and my, uh, email signature or whatever. And he just got it and he just preferred calling. And so probably once or twice a day, he'd call me and be like, Hey man, like, uh, can we get this done or like what, whatever else they needed. And it felt weird for me. Cause I mean, like it was in my first year in the role and I right. was like, I don't know if this is like appropriate or yeah, like, you kind of how don't do know I, what to do like right off the bat, you have to like, yeah, the confidence isn't there for you. To, yeah. And so it was, it was a little weird, but now that we have that client account manager, uh, she kind of runs most of the communication. So if I ever have questions, I just send them to her and she communicates oh, them with the cool. client. So it's a lot easier. That's awesome, man. What? So you're you born in Houston? Mm-hmm. Raised in Houston. Born and raised. Yeah, the Houston area. Everyone just says Houston, but yeah, yeah, pretty close. Well, we're technically we're in Georgetown, but we say Austin. You know, yeah. Like, and so originally, I was born in Galena Park, which is like East Houston. It's like down the hood a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but around the first grade, I moved up to Huffman, Texas, which is like this little small country town. <laughs> 
definitely didn't really fit in too well i mean like i, I like i like the country i like having fun i like going mudding and stuff and mm-hmm. but i wasn't like a big fisher like i don't really go hunting that much like my grandpa my grandpa does and like my uncles do but it's not like something i'm like always into so yeah yeah i feel that it was, it was a little different and you got dudes driving around lifted trucks big wheels like all kinds of stuff and of course my first car i got a mustang so it was like <laughs> a little bit out of the blue um but yeah and then so my junior year actually transferred schools uh, oh shoot junior yeah. high school yeah yeah junior year high school transferred schools to crosby which is like just south of it it's not as country it's got a little more diversity to it mm-hmm. so it's a little more fun for me anyway but yeah so but that's all all of that's like 30 45 minutes east of here or not here houston Downtown <laughs> just, yeah that's cool that's pretty close that's yeah similar, so it's not literally yeah. similar to right where we are right now yeah it's it's interesting being on the outskirts of a big city because you there's i don't know there's still a decent amount to do on the outskirts but mm-hmm. it's it's definitely obviously not the big city vibe you get yeah. but you're so close that and it's almost a burden how close you are right because it's like you want to go downtown yeah. you're like ah oh, well if we we go downtown that means we got to drive back or like we'll find a place to stay mm-hmm. and that's kind of how it was where i grew up i grew up in north texas area granberry right. so we were like 45 minutes i think south or so honestly i don't even yeah i think south 45 minutes south of fort worth southwest or something right. like that and so it's like you want to go to fort worth <laughs> It's yeah. like a whole day event, you know, and you don't want to like in high school, like we, I didn't have the gas money to drive there every weekend or even most of the, like even, so I rarely went is what I'm trying to say, but right. there's like a mall and stuff. And like, yeah. we said, so we didn't, for the most part, when I was in high school, we didn't really go downtown very often. Like mm-hmm. we would go maybe like once or twice a year. Like we'd go see like the Houston zoo lights. Like that was always a fun thing to do. Like during Christmas time, they had mm-hmm. like lights throughout the zoo or like if we wanted to go to see like an Astros game. But like oh, yeah. before you turn 18, like there's really not a lot to do right. downtown Houston. Like there's not like, they have like events and stuff, but that's just like, that wasn't like our, like my friend group. Like it wasn't like something that we really did. We didn't go out that much. Yeah, no, I feel that. What, um, so let's talk about college now. So yeah. I know obviously a lot happens in, in high school and you develop interests in things and yours was baseball and then you, mm-hmm. Got to go play college ball at UMHB, yeah. man. How was that experience? That for you? was honestly like something that I had like wanted to do growing up, like my entire life. Like when I, I, I could literally remember from like when I was like eight years old, I was like, okay, I want to go play college baseball. Yeah. Like at some, like I don't know, how, I don't even, at the time, I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't understand how it all worked, but I knew that was like a dream of mine. And so, like, like I started playing baseball when I was three years old, which is like, which is young. Like normally you wait till four or five. Yeah. But my dad was the coach, and I was like, they thought it was good enough, so I just, they kind of let me play. And just kind of growing up, and then I think when I turned like seven, I started playing like select ball. So like for like basketball, it's like AU, mm-hmm. like it's just called select for baseball. Um, and then just literally played that up until I graduated high school, and so That's awesome. getting to put all like from putting all that work in all those like weekends playing and then finally going to get to play baseball in college was like it was crazy yeah i bet yeah was it so you went to umhb which is a private school private baptist college right? yeah yeah what was that baseball experience like there like was it different than what you kind of pictured in your mind because uh you know yeah so getting recruited it's like a weird process and a lot of times it's hard to unless you're like really good which like in high school I was I was good I wasn't like amazing, right. but unless you're really good you're not gonna go to these deep like big D ones especially coming from like a four A or five A school yeah if you're at a six A school and you're doing pretty decent then you might get some looks but if you're at like four A five A school and you're not completely dominating there's no shot you're gonna go to these big D ones and I kind of learned that like close to like my junior year of high school I kind of figured that out and so I was like kind of almost like settling I was like all right let me just go D three like. Like right. I want to go play college baseball, like whatever that looks like, I want to go do that. And mm-hmm. so getting there, it's, it's a little bit different than what I expected. Cause I expected more of like, okay, like this is like almost like your job now. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I, that's like all you hear about, like from D one players is like, now that you're D one, like this is literally like everything you do is centered around like playing the sport. But at a D three, it's, you still have that like student athlete title. Like mm. it's definitely more focused on like, look, like we know you're here, like you love playing the sport. That's all, that's all it was. It was like guys that just like love playing the sport. Cause there weren't no scholarships. You weren't right. getting no money from it. It was just, let's just hang out 
<laughs> play a sport that we love like you put some work in like see how good you can do yeah and so but they were like really focused on like getting done with your school though so that's that, cool. that, that was cool i i was kind of glad for that though. that's beneficial yeah especially mm-hmm. well baseball's a little different but like in most other sports if you're d3 the odds of you going pro yeah it's it's really you, slim yeah and yeah. so i i can see how that's just like a a really just a passion point passionate uh, yeah. about the sport at that point because of the fact that it's just super hard to get into yeah. any sort of pro but yeah i think it's like every year i think there's like three or four d3 players of the entire nation that get drafted wow yeah that's crazy that's insane man. mostly pitchers too oh that makes a lot of yeah. sense too um what was it like did you guys get any like special treatment from the teachers or anything be honest, uh, be honest, be honest. <laughs> For the most part, no. Um, that sucks. So not worth it. U- yeah, UMHB, it's a big football school. If you don't yeah. know, like, if you ever like, a lot of time, I, it's always fun to see though, because like you see these like Twitter pages, like the Texas sports pages or whatever, and they're always talking about like the best football teams and and like best college football teams in Texas, mm-hmm. and like UMHB is always the top, like it's always the top one because they have the most wins in like the last like 10 years or whatever Jeez. just because they yeah so they they kind of got special treatment a little bit just because of how good they were right um it was it wasn't nothing crazy though it was just like kind of like the teachers were like they like you knew who the the football players were yeah and so like for baseball the the teachers weren't like annoyed with us ever so like like most of the teachers that were there they were like really cool like they were nice they were cool they would help you out when you needed it because like during the season we're we'd be gone for probably about a third of the of the semester yeah just because for travel time and then just whatever else comes up and so sometimes like you most of them like they they knew like they were like hey like if you you play a sport like come up to me like very like that's the first thing they say in class like come to me let me know and then we'll make accommodations like depending on like if you have to leave for like Mm -hmm. a game or something or if you're not going to be here like whatever works so they're always like really cool about it but i wouldn't say like special treatment i think it was more of like they were kind of just doing what they like it made sense to do right but it wasn't like oh like i know this dude's playing baseball let me give him like 10 more points on a test or something no it was yeah that's wild yeah I, i remember at texas tech i was in a i think it was my first year there i didn't exactly know what I was going to major in. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I took a couple random classes yeah. and I had this, uh, sports management cat class and it was like, I mean, the teacher was cool. She yeah. used to work with one of the very famous women's coaches that coached at the, at Texas tech. Mm-hmm. And so she'd been in the system for a while, a long time. She knew yeah. Texas tech and she knew like, like sports management stuff, I guess. I don't know. Right. And so, um, a lot of athletes went in that class. I had like mm-hmm. two or three football players mm-hmm. and a, I remember one basketball player. His name is Matt Temple. Big, this dude actually got recruited by Texas Tech playing pickup ball, pick up ball with his fraternity uh, at just at the rec. What? I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Like he was just a massive dude yeah. and he knew how to like use his body and stuff. And so he's playing pickup ball and somebody saw him and then they were like, yeah, red shirt, come play with us. And, he That's did cool. <laughs> but dude he showed up i legitimately saw him three times in class the whole semester and yeah. i was like where's he at and then he still passed he still graduated and i was like yeah no, that, that, yeah. that would not happen with us there like, it if is you didn't show up you're yeah yeah and it's it, yeah it's smaller school too so they know yeah. but this the coach i mean i guess the teacher of the class who used to be a coach she was like probably all for it like ah, yeah. okay just <laughs> you know I, re- I know what you're doing. Just go ahead and do it. Because yeah. at D1s, it's it's it's, it's, cr- it's so crazy, man. Because I, I also had classes with football players. Mm-hmm. And the same thing. They wouldn't show up ever. Like hardly ever. Yeah. And then some. At, there was a certain point in time where I remember that they had, uh, they had to start showing up, I think. Because they started to miss a lot. Yeah. And so what would happen is that they would assign a student to be with them as like a chaperone kind of to make sure that they went to class and so there'd be there'd be a student in class that was like taking log for the the athlete making sure they went and stayed for like the whole thing yeah it was crazy man and like i think eventually like i heard a couple stories that the athletes would pay them to like be like yo just sign me in and they would pay them or like give them whatever because i don't know how it works at umhb but at tech 
like they're obviously sponsored by uh, Under Armour, and so they right. get a ton of gear. And so they'd be like, "You want this shirt? You want these shorts? You want this these pair of shoes? Yeah. Here you go. Just sign me in." And so, I mean, it, dude, and like Texas Tech is like a football school, heavy, right? Yeah. All the way up until the last four years, then basketball kind of flipped, and basketball is kind of the bigger thing now. But it's just crazy the the perks that they get and and the stuff that happens behind the scenes that nobody knows about. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so that's also, like, the difference between D1 and D3. Like, D1's, like, they they get, like, sponsorships. Right. With, but D3, it's not really a spot. It's, like, more of a partnership. Yeah. That makes sense. So, like, we don't get all this free stuff. Like, we still, I mean, we don't pay for it, sort of say, but, like, the school pays for it. Like, they, like, they still have to buy everything. Like, every year we got tennis shoes or, like, trainers, and then we would get cleats. And then that was we'd get like a shirt like a practice shirt a game shirt to wear like under your jersey if you wanted one and then like a long sleeve and i think that was it yeah and then i think two of the years i was there they they gave us bats but that was like a different partnership with a different oh, well, cool. brand yeah but i mean other than that like you have to buy your own glove your own batting glove oh that's like, crazy yeah and then, i mean like of course like everything in the uniform they like they but you, that's not yours though you don't get to keep but if you like every one any like sleeves or like wristbands or anything else like you got to buy yourself wow i didn't yeah. know that and so it's a little wild. bit different <laughs> i think the the baseball culture is like what's that one brand evo shield Ooh, mm-hmm. something like that yeah evo shield so that's yeah. like a pretty popular brand in baseball culture the stuff looks sweet yeah but it works too yeah yeah so they have like different a lot of it's it's all like about protection. Like it's, it's like a shield, you know? Yeah. And so they have like the one that you see a lot of the pros where they have like on the elbow, like yeah. the elbow pad, like that's, it like conforms. So it comes in just like a flat pack. And then whenever you open it up, like some, something about it, whenever it touches air, it like starts forming. So like when you first get it, yeah, you gotta mold it. So you just put it on, wrap it around. You literally sit there for 30 minutes, just like having it on. Wow. Yeah. So those are kind of crazy. I had one for my wrist. That would wear there's like a little wristband just so like the ground balls pop up don't hit you in the wrist yeah but. that's cool the baseball gear looks sweet though like if you mm-hmm. if you know what you like and you yeah. like it's it looks pretty dope yeah. especially with the glasses on <laughs> yeah so that was something i didn't really get into until i got into college like growing up i never wore like sunglasses or anything like if the sun was in my eyes i just kind of got used to it which is weird to say but and then I got into college and I was like, everyone else is wearing sunglasses. I want to wear sunglasses. And I started wearing them. But after that, it was just like I had to wear them. Yeah. Uh, if the sun was out, I had to have them on because my eyes got got so adjusted to wearing them that sun was just so bright if I wouldn't wear them. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of crazy that you can. There's a sport where you can have sunglasses on. Yeah. Right. It's weird to think about. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess in basketball you can wear goggles. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. whatever. That's that's that's. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, we, we had a couple kids that would wear goggles. Yeah. Yeah. Are they nerds? <laughs> See, that's the thing. is like baseball, you <laughs> get some really weird personalities and like funny oh, personalities. Really? Yeah, everyone's got like a, especially the pitchers. The pitchers are the worst. <laughs> they do seem the weirdest. Yeah, the pitchers are definitely the weirdest. And it's funny to say because like at one point I was a PO. Yeah. And so it was, I was <laughs> kind of part of that group. But yeah, definitely the pitchers are the, they, they have the personalities of the, the group. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. What was your favorite part of that experience playing baseball? Like, um, was it the group of guys you got to meet, or was it actually playing ball and like continuing that that dream of yours? Or a lot of it was just playing ball. Like yeah. that was. There's just something about baseball that I just love doing, and I mean, I'm sure like every everyone has their passion, right? So right. that was just like kind of what mine was, and I just like loved being out there, loved being on the field, just like kicking dirt around, just <laughs> standing in the field, just kicking dirt yeah honestly like that's like that's you if you talk to a lot of like infielders like that's what a lot of them will say like that's what they miss the most about playing is just like moving the dirt around with your feet it's just like it's a different feeling you feel yeah. comfortable with, like it's like your spot um and like after the games like we would rake the field or like pick up stuff and like 
a lot of times like everyone had assignments and so your assignment was to pick up basically around your area like where you played and so like you kind of had this like ownership like okay like this is my spot like this is my area like i'm gonna keep it clean i'm gonna yeah like keep it right and so even during the game like you're just kind of like moving stuff around like this is how i like it so it was like it was almost like it was your part of the field yeah you think that's why they have you guys do that or do you think it's just because it's faster yes and i i think it had something to do with it but also it's faster picking up everyone's like (laughs) different parts of the field everybody's helping out yeah that's I've never thought about that actually because you see that all the time not in the pros obviously they don't do anything but play ball but yeah like I know in high school that's a big thing you have to pick up after the field you have to rake it and I I don't think you guys mow do y'all uh no the when we're in high school the coach mode and then in college we had like a grounds crew that would come mow yeah but I mean we would like well in high school so our high school field really wasn't all that great like if it ever rained Oh man, those days were crazy. It would hold water so easily. Oh wow! And so there'd oh, be that's everywhere in Houston. Yeah, though. but like there, there's that like that like period of time. It's like kind of in the February ish time, like when like baseball season's starting, where it, like, it just starts raining a lot and it's cold, and like water would just sit out there so bad. Like mm-hmm. we would have days where we were supposed to practice where we're out there with like shop vacs and like squeegees like out in the outfield like getting water off the field dang and we had like guys on the other side of the fence like digging trenches to like so we would like fill the shop back up put in buckets like run over the fence dump it over the fence and it was (laughs) running off the field and so we out be out there for a day maybe two days doing that (laughs) And so, I mean, that like that also kind of came with like, okay, like this is our field. Like we've been putting all this work yeah. in. Like it, it builds some type, like a different type of bond that you would get yeah. than, than you wouldn't have it another way. But it's crazy though, because my high school or Crosby that I graduated from, they like two years after I graduated, they built a brand new like complex. And so there's, so now it's like this whole, like you walk into it, it does not look like a high school. It's, they have, two full-size turf baseball fields two full-size softball fields Jeez. yeah and it's completely turf and so like we, we always go back like a lot of us will go back and just like man these these guys don't know what it is like like they have it nice here like they don't have to do all these like they don't have to keep up with the field like most they have to do is like kind of just like pick up trash like right. that's it yeah and so it's it's definitely i feel like they get them they're missing out on something but then again it's like you can get to play on turf field you gotta do anything yeah. to it there's no bad hops there's like pros and cons yeah and, so would you um would you ever consider doing something with baseball as a career like a full-time career yeah like i've always kind of thought about it i mean so i thought that i may have like had the chance to like maybe do something after college yeah um like in terms of like place professionally or something yeah uh definitely not going to like straight into the majors like right. that's it's so hard to do you kind of learn about it a little more as you grow up like most of the guys that get drafted like you don't go straight into playing for whatever team you get drafted for like there's a you got to go through the minor leagues and play for a little bit um but i mean i was like a pretty good pitcher and yeah. so like that was like something that i like if i like probably could have put a little more time into i probably could have done i like, maybe just started low and then like work a little bit more into it but and then i tore my labrum and then it was just like <laughs> that's it <laughs> so you just tore it after years of wear and tear yeah i think that's what it was um for the most part but so when i got it like x-rayed and everything they mm-hmm. they like found that i have this like weird i, I always forget what it's, it's like degenerative like bone something and so like my shoulders are actually like degenerating like the bone marrow in them oh my god yeah which is like crazy to think about like because i can't really tell i mean they said like some people have it but unless you do like extensive work with it like you would never tell right and just so like the years of just throwing and throwing and throwing and just kind of eventually like at some point just gave out wears it out yeah yeah that's crazy yeah and they said like it's not like one of those things like where you like have to get Tommy John, you blow out your like meniscus or whatever. Like, like it's not something you just feel like it's just like a, af- after a while, it's just like, you just realize that you can't throw anymore. Mm. And I, I think it, it happened my junior year in college whenever I was, I was, I was just pitching. So I was just pitching. So every time I would throw, I was throwing it like literally as hard as I can. And I said like at the beginning of the season, I was like sitting like 85, like around there. I was like top at 88 by the end of the season. 
it was like what, three months later, I was like barely hitting 80. Wow. And like, I, I thought it was just like, oh, like I've never done like a full season just pitching before. So that's probably just what it is. But then I took the whole summer off because I was like, let me just take a break. Like, let me let my arm rest. Like, just kind of hang out for a little bit. Come back my senior season. Uh, right at the beginning of the fall season when I started throwing again I just like I knew something was wrong because it was yeah. like it was hurting bad I could barely throw it like 180 feet Jeez. and it was just like yeah it kind of just takes you out of it and you're just like <laughs> can't do anything now so it's weird that's such a but, bummer but yeah so that kind of took away my chance of like going pro or anything mm. um, but I always kind of want to be like around the sport in some way mm-hmm. like I've, I've thought about like going to coach I actually, I, right now I'm like doing, uh, I do like lessons, like batting lessons that's and cool. pitching lessons for like kids around like Houston area. So that's fun to do. Um, and then I was starting to get into like coaching a team, but the team I was coaching was not good. And so it was, <laughs> it was kind of hard. Like I, I kind of, feel, I kind of feel for the coaches that I played for when we like weren't playing well. Like right. I, I, I get it now. Like it's just, you feel like everything's your fault, even though like you kind of know it's not, but right. it's just like you kind of take the blame for everything. And, and I just kind of, this wasn't ready for that to yeah. jump in. And the kids were so young and like, I just felt bad. And there was a lot of politics that go into it with the, the parents and everything. It was just, that's strange yeah so it's weird. Whole, i take a break for a little bit and yeah. come back later <laughs> the whole politics thing is super weird it's like yeah i i understand it from the parents point like i want mm-hmm. my kid to play i want them to succeed and and you know have fun yeah so it's like i'm gonna do what i can to make sure they can but it, at a certain point it's like let you got to let them do it on their own and you have to like if they're not good yeah. then you're gonna put them in a worse position because of that if they're playing when they're not good or when they yeah. shouldn't be that whole thing is weird because it's in every sport where there's politics and yeah. it's like a, not even just in sports it's literally in everything like jobs mm-hmm. like you know it's who you know not what you know and exactly. like such a strange concept but yeah man that's crazy it's cool that you're coaching though it's cool that you're passing on that knowledge Yeah, I, I admire that my dad I'm sure just like your dad has always coached me mm-hmm. and like you know my dad was basketball we played basketball growing up all the time and, and baseball up until yeah. a certain point and he was always the coach. Like he taught us everything, and I'm yeah. sure your dad was like yeah, that too. Literally so the exact same. So yeah. yeah, does it does it feel like? Do you ever like think about that when you're coaching? You're like, man, I got yeah, kind of what my dad. Well, so my dad's like, he's literally like, Mister Everything. Like he <laughs> he's involved in every single thing that he can possibly be involved in. Like growing up, like he like obviously he's like, he coached my baseball team. He mm-hmm. coached my, well. He even before I was born, he was coaching already. Like he was like he was coaching like his like friends son's teams or like his like cousins teams or like wh- wherever he could be coaching and so like of course like once i grew up and i was playing like it was easy for him just to jump into it and so like he did like baseball basketball football played soccer for a year he was coaching that he had no idea to play soccer but he, he, he coached us and like he had, he had some help but he was like one of the coaches and uh yeah just like and then so doing that until literally up until i got into high school and like there was no reason for him to coach me anymore yeah and that's weird. At some point, he was running the basketball league in our <laughs> in our town. Yeah, like he was like the head guy. Like so, that was kind of cool growing up because I, I think it was from when I was in like sixth grade up until I got like close into high school. He was like running it. And so my like after school, I'd just go over to the gym and just like hang out and like make sure like because people like were running practice so sometimes sometimes i'd be the one opening the gym like eighth Dang. grade like running over because like it wasn't too far from right right from where we were and so i would just run over open the gym for people let people in and uh so that was kind of fun and then weekends like all the games were on saturday and so yeah. my weekends were spent like i would either be running like running the concession or i'd be like doing the scorebook or the uh the score during the game like time clock everything oh yeah and then it even like turned into like me refing for a little bit. Like I, I would ref like the little kids. <laughs> yeah. So it, that was always fun. Got to grow up around that. Um, definitely wouldn't have had that experience if he wasn't running it. Yeah. But right. Yeah. So and then on top of that, he was even part of he held, like held a position on the school board. Wow. Yeah. And so he's just like literally anything he could do he was doing it i don't Dang. i still don't understand how he was doing all these things like Pops. at the same time so i don't know if i'd ever get to that <laughs> extent yeah but definitely like no i definitely see myself like doing the same things that he, he was doing growing up yeah yeah so that's, that's cool that's so cool man and it's really cool i really like the fact that 
not only are you going to have the knowledge that he had and he mm-hmm. gave to you, but all this other knowledge that you've accumulated, yeah. you're going to be able to pass it down and, and yeah. show these little kids, even if you know them or don't, and eventually maybe your kids, if mm-hmm. you know that's the thing. But I think it's the coolest thing is like you like have a kid come in, you kind of like see, you can easily see the things you're doing wrong. You just like do the things that like other coaches do with you, and then all of a sudden they're getting it, and you're like, dang, this actually works. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So it's a really cool just opportunity to teach somebody something yeah, yeah absolutely like, yeah that's amazing dude would you ever like is, is there are, are there specific gyms that are just for baseball i know they have like you know cages where they have like machines that throw pitches and stuff but mm-hmm. is there anything that's like a half that half like weight room that that specializes in baseball only stuff um i would i would say yes and no like they don't not to my knowledge do they have like a like a gym where it's like just baseball yeah i mean like they have like the, like they have like batting cages you can go to and like some of them will have like weights on the side but a lot of times like they'll double as like a like a pilates or something like right. that, that's what i've like i've realized a lot of people do because it's like whenever they don't like saturday and sunday mornings like they don't like people aren't going to go to the cage that early so right. like they'll like find someone to like do like Pilates classes or whatever. Oh, and right. so all the cages that they have, like the nets can like go all the way back. So it's just like one open space. And so they'll open it up for like people to come in and do those things. But mm-hmm. for the most part, they don't really have people to run like baseball workouts. Right. And so like you, every once in a while, like you'll see like some guy doing those things. And so it will be like, Hey, like I'm doing this like class, like I'll teach you how to work out for baseball. But it's, most of the time it's like focused on like, junior seniors in high school like a little bit older um yeah and so that's pretty much it yeah it's like you don't maybe, really see like the combination of the two maybe yeah. that'd be a cool little market to maybe explore i uh, see i think that's a cool like i really i appreciate the fact that not all sports need the same training that's something yeah. that's super just interesting to me and it reminds me of tom brady because mm-hmm. i don't know if you know like i don't know a ton about it but i just know that he doesn't like he doesn't do bench press Right. for like max reps or he doesn't do deadlift for like 400 pounds just because it's like there's yeah. no need to in, in the specific position as a quarterback right it's like why would he need to move that much weight when he's really just you know staying in the pocket being elusive and, and just throwing the ball so yeah. he like he tailors his workout specifically to his position that makes sense which is why he's like the longevity he's had is you know almost unheard of yeah in any sport world you know yeah and then like same with like lebron it's a little different with lebron because he's like He's pouring getting more active. In, yeah, and yeah. he's pouring in like millions of dollars into his body, which is crazy. It doesn't even doesn't even make sense. Like he's he's probably spent more bu- money on his body than probably like ninety percent of the American population will ever make in their life. Absolutely. Like like yeah. like like millions of dollars like a year just like to rehab himself, which is in that doesn't even yeah. make any sense. But do you um, what what were some of the baseball specific workouts that they had that you do? Well, so actually, I didn't even get into that until I got into college. So yeah. like high school, like a lot, I, I don't know if it was just they just didn't know. Yeah, or I, high school coaches they don't just, know. Yeah, they just didn't really care. They like know we, the, we, they we know would the do the sport, same, but not like the mechanics or like yeah. what builds it. So we would do the same workouts as everyone else. Um, but when we got into high school, a lot of it was, or not high school. When we got into college, a lot of it was like endurance stuff. If yeah. that makes sense but like slow endurance and then it was like a mixture of like slow endurance and then like fast action explosiveness Mm -hmm. because like that's basically what baseball is it's like short movements that like when you're hitting a ball it's just like a quick swing but you got to be so powerful in that like 0.2 seconds or however long it is um and so we would do like squats when we do squats we would do like time squats so you do like three seconds going down holding it down for three seconds and then exploding up as fast as you can with like a little jump at the top. Mm. Like, so you wouldn't do like a whole lot of weight, but like you do like five reps of that for three sets. Oh, it, it kills. kills your legs. Like, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, you see the, like the difference it makes though. Cause I mean, I was like fast in high school. I wasn't like the fastest, but I was like decently fast. But when I got into college and I started like doing these like actual specific workouts to like make me faster and make me stronger in the sport like i blew up it was crazy yeah like i'm pretty sure i like ran like so for like football you run like 40s baseball you run 60s like 60 yards 
like that's how they measure like speed on for the baseball field and i think in high school i ran this like a seven one which is like very average like most d1 players will run like a six three six four and so Jeez. like yeah so like these are like the really fast guys so i ran a seven one in high school and so like very average like it was not i was faster than people but there was a lot that, of people that faster special. than me yeah but I ran it, I think, my sophomore year. I think we were, like, just kind of, like, testing it out. And I, th- I ran, like, a 6-7, something Jeez. like that, six seven five. So just, like, that, like, year and a half of, like, actually doing specific workouts just, like, dropped a couple yeah. milliseconds Holy off, crap. which is, like, it makes the biggest difference. It's That's like, so crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I know, like, f- this is not even near the same, but whenever I hit college, I – um so basketball was my sport. I played basketball all throughout mm-hmm. high school and – that was the only sport I played. And of course, like similar to you, the coaches don't know how to work you out. Yeah. Like they had us doing like heavy hang cleans, heavy yeah. squats, heavy bench. When in reality, it's like, that's not what you need. You yeah. know, that's not going to get you better. That's like football workouts. It's yeah. like you're trying to put on weight. But I mean, it, you look at Baylor though this past year. That's what they were flexing the whole time was like that they worked out with the football team. Oh, true. That's yeah. true. So I'm like, does it really work? I don't know. Yeah, right. I guess to a certain point, yeah. it's like, yeah, who knows? But yeah, um, yeah so like I, we didn't do any of that stuff. And when we did, it wasn't consistent. Mm-hmm. So like you never really, you got better, but like very, very, very slow. Yeah. Not like, not like if you were consistently working out like four times a week. That makes sense. And like, you know, yeah. slowly improving. It was just the name of the game in high school because basketball mm-hmm. was the focus or whatever. And then I got to college and just working out i picked it up as like a hobby and like yeah. just like a fitness and health thing and man like i my basketball game improved like 10 times because of like yeah how much stronger i was i could in turn shoot the ball further shoot the ball quick like not even quicker but i knew like i was more explosive due to the lifts i was doing and yeah. i was like what the heck man like <laughs> yeah it makes a big difference i know it was weird because in, in high school i was like okay but in, high, in college, I was like good. Like yeah. our intramural team was like pretty good, and I was good. I was better than what I was in high school, and I was like, "This is so annoying." <laughs> if I would have played like this, I probably could have gone like a D three offer or something. Yeah. But it's just crazy, like the differences that it makes when you're like actively working on something specific, like you're specifically working mm-hmm. on like a, a skill or a, a strength in a certain skill. You know? Right. Yeah. Actually, I played basketball in high school. Like that, I, I was like a two sport athlete. I did basketball and baseball. And I was actually pretty good. I, yeah. like, I think I probably could have like went to a small school to play somewhere. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That was always like, cause I mean, I grew up playing it. And so it was just always something I was like, always one of the better ones in mm-hmm. my area, I guess. But yeah, no, but definitely I, I got into college, got a little bit stronger, go play in the gym, like playing open court. And you're just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, why wasn't I playing like this? Like for the long, like when I was in high school, this is yeah. crazy. But it's so for for me basketball was like i was good but you get a little nervous when you're playing an actual game and yeah like, it, it's like <laughs> so for me i was like open gym i was balling up because i didn't care i would like do not yeah i would do almost like trick type stuff but mm-hmm. stuff that was definitely not technical yeah and not uh, like fundamental stuff you learn and stuff you wouldn't apply to an actual game right right and like and i had this idea in my head that like okay that stuff's for pickup and i'm gonna do uh you know it's very specific and, and technical things when i'm in the games mm-hmm. and like for some reason my mind just didn't like understand that it doesn't matter like at a certain point like as yeah. long as you're doing what you need to do and you're doing it well like do behind the back passes or like do like the stuff that's fun and so whenever i would play pickup i would do way better be way more consistent than i was in when an actual game would come up yeah and I was like, dang it, man, because in college, <laughs> I didn't care. And so that's why I was like balling so much better. Plus, I was stronger right. and faster. And did that, is that the same thing in baseball? Is it like when you play, I know it's harder to play like pickup baseball, but like, it, do you have that um, same kind of thing where you're like, oh, if I just kind of didn't care as much almost, I would be doing better in the game? I, I think it's the opposite, actually. I think it's wow. easier to play in front of fans and like in an actual game. Because like when you're in practice, like, everything feels like work yeah you know and so like the whole point of baseball is like to literally do the work to the point to where like when you're in the game doing it you're not even thinking about doing it you're just doing it mm-hmm. and so like that that's when it's like the most fun 
is like in the games and like you're diving making plays like turning double plays like throwing yeah. people out like hitting doubles and stuff like that's like the most fun part of baseball is like actually playing it and like because and then all the work that you put in behind it like i'm not gonna lie like take ground balls for an hour in a day like it, it's not that fun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, I mean, like, you do it, and so, like, you get into the game, dude hits a shot at, like, some people, like, that was probably, like, the craziest thing about college is, like, every guy, you like, every team has these, like, big dudes, like, like, 6'2", 6'3", 220, just, Jeez. like, and just hit rockets at you. Like, they hit it, and you're, like, if you're not already getting ready to catch it, you're not going to catch it yeah. like, before they hit it. That's insane. Yeah, and so... That was, like, always the thing. It's, like, that's why you do all these, like, during practice, you take so many ground balls. So, like, whenever that happens, like, instead of, like, your brain having to think about what you're doing, you just, like, your body just does it. And it's, nice like, memory. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, I definitely think, like, probably for baseball, the, the actual games were a lot more fun. And, like, that was when you, like, you have these little antics that you do with your team or, like, mm-hmm. little, like I say chance, Like, you kind of stop doing chance where you, like, grow up a little bit. <laughs> Or you go watch a softball game; they still do chance and stuff. <laughs> but like, we, like, we'll, like, we do like. I always this is like the one I always tell people because it's the funniest thing. You, you've seen Shrek, right? Yeah. yeah. So the scene where um, was it Lord Fa- Farquaad yeah, or something like yeah, that? Yeah. He's like talking to the mirror, and like the mirror's like showing him like his options like for girls to pick out of. <laughs> And he's like, which one are you going to pick? And the game show music comes on. And, like, the dude in the back, he's like, pick number three, my lord. Oh, yeah. And so we don't, we would have this thing. It was, like, this dude on our team. He was, Of course, he was a pitcher. And he could say it perfectly. <laughs> and so, some like, we had, like, some pretty fast guys on our team that would, like, steal a lot. And other teams knew that. So they would try to pick us off a lot. Mm-hmm. And so if they ever picked him off on the third time, oh, he was right on it every single time. He's like, pick number three, my lord. And it was <laughs> awesome. Like, you would see the first baseman laughing. Like, everyone That's in the so stands funny. would laugh. Oh, it was great. So, like, we'd have, like, little things like that. And that kind of kept it more fun. But, like, yeah. you wouldn't do that stuff in practice. Yeah. yeah. That's that's freaking fun, man. I <laughs> I played uh, softball with my dad. We were talking about that earlier. Like, yeah. slow pitch adult, like, men's league softball. And it it's fun, man. It's yeah. so fun playing. And I was just like, it made me think, why did I stop playing baseball? Because it's <laughs> so fun, and it's you're yeah. outside, which is honestly, I think that's a cool part of the the game, like the aspect of being outside yeah. and the the element. Because in basketball, you're indoors. You, mm-hmm. Nobody plays outdoor basketball for like unless it's pickup ball. But it's just a fun sport, and it's America's pastime, which mm-hmm. is freaking awesome too. Do you you go to many games nowadays? Uh, yeah. So ever since I graduated college i've been able to go to more games mm-hmm. like just because i've been free during the season and everything so and you're close right yeah and so i actually live probably like seven minutes from minute Maid. and so last year I, pr- I probably went to like 10 or 11 games that's so cool yeah and it's a, i know it's a little different now because covid and like they're not as many people in so the tickets are a little more but like then it was like you pay 30 bucks to get a ticket mm-hmm. and like actually sit in like a good seat and so wow. uh, we would go every once in a while like have a good time I've driven by Minute Maid a couple times. It's it looks cool. I've never been inside of it, but yeah, it's a nice park. I, I like it a lot. And my probably my favorite part of it is like Houston is so humid, and like in the summer it gets so hot. And like and then we have that roof that can close over the top, <laughs> and so it's like air conditioned. You can wear whatever you want in there, and it's like it's comfortable. So that's crazy, dude. But then again, like during times when it's like nice weather outside, it can open up, and it's like a beautiful day. So. Yeah, dude. I, I haven't been to the uh, well. Not many people have, I guess, but the new stadium in Arlington right. for the Rangers. Yeah. I'm excited to go. I think my family's going to be going like sometime in soon. I think they're yeah. going to go within a couple of weeks, but I'm jealous about that. Cause it's, it looks cool. It, I think it looks cool. People say that it looks weird, but <laughs> it's literally minute made 2.0. It, if yeah. you, if you put them next to each other, they look the exact same, which <laughs> is crazy, but it's actually, it's the same. It was the same builder. They're saying oh. like architect or whatever. So that's kind of whack. Yeah. Could've, you could have changed it up a bit. It's still they still call it Globe Life though, don't they? I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Globe Life, Globe Life, man. I remember. I love the original one, like the first, like the OG one that re- this one replaced. Mm-hmm. That was a cool feel. See, I never got to go to that one. I was kind of upset. Whoa. Yeah, I, I I wanted to go, but I never did. And then they built the new one, so I was like, yeah, yeah. kind of got the miss out man, on that. It's so cool. I love that it was all outside. I'm sure like the the roof mm-hmm. would have been nice. I remember getting sunburned like <laughs> big time at those games. Yeah. You just, Especially like you know we get nosebleeds that's like all we really get and yeah. and so 
it's not a seven minute drive for us. It's like a, from Granbury. It's mm-hmm. like a close to an hour to Arlington and back, or just to Arlington. Yeah. So one way is one hour, and so I remember, dude. There's nothing like being at a baseball game. A professional oh, baseball yeah. game is probably one of the most awesome sporting events you could ever go to, and yeah. it's because of like the history behind it. Mm-hmm. The then the announcers over the loudspeaker, like always going on, the music playing, like yeah. the chants, because there are chants. I don't know how global. I mean, how yeah, no, they are, they do stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, chants, and it's I can't explain it, man. But it's just you get this feeling, like, and you're just like, yeah, like let's go. Even yeah. if you don't like baseball, <laughs> you, it's hard to not have fun at a yeah. baseball game because the energy in the in the in the arena is just amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, dude. And I I just remember going to those games, and just loving every aspect of it where whether it's from the peanuts to the popcorn to the the ballpark franks yeah dude it's so fun man i know a lot of people complain that it's like a slow game mm-hmm. but i think like i think for tv it's hard to watch i think that, yeah. that's the that's why a lot of people don't like it but when you go to a game like it's it's a good thing that it's slow because mm-hmm. if things were happening way too fast you'd miss so much yeah like, that's why, like, if you go to, like, the basketball game, things are constantly happening. Like, if you're not paying attention, if you look away for a little bit, you're going to miss, like, 10, 12 points. Yeah. From baseball, like, you hear the crack of a bat. You can look up oh. and see what's going on. Like, I think that's probably my favorite sound is, like, especially in uh, Minute Maid, because when the, that roof is closed, <laughs> everything is so much louder. That's awesome. And so, like, that's why a lot of people talk about, like, I know, like, you go back to 2017, like, when we won the World Series, everyone, like, <laughs> the whole scandal behind it, uh, it's, it's tough to deal with as, like, a fan, but... I bet. Like, going to those games, and... Because, actually, I went to Game 4 of the World Series. That's yeah. That's freaking awesome. And so, that that was more of, like, a pitcher's duel, so there wasn't a whole lot of hits. I think it ended up being, like, 2-3 to three or 4-2 to two or something like that. We, lo- like, Houston lost that game, but, like... Anytime anything good happened, dude, it was like, it just felt like everyone was just screaming. It was so loud. You couldn't hear anything. It was crazy. And then like somebody hits the ball and it's like that little like moment of silence where it's like, it's just dead. And then that ball hits the ground and it's just the whole place erupts. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's crazy. Like there's no other like way to describe it. I mean, like you, like you see like these videos of like, like college football games, mm-hmm. like quarterback that was like a long long pass and then everyone's kind of like waiting for it to happen and as soon as he catches it like the whole that, like that's, oh, yeah. that's how it is for like every hit or yeah. like every strikeout like so like it happens so much more and like yeah. it's so much more fun to be a part of yeah i feel like no i agree 100 percent. i agree and it's first of all the crack of the bat hearing that is just it's a, yeah <laughs> it's, it's I mean, such a nice sound i'm not even like you know a super big baseball fan mm-hmm. i don't keep up with my team as much as i should but like Dude, just hearing that crack, it's like, like it lights yeah. you up. You're like, what? Yeah. Like, that is freaking cool. I, I remember one time, so my my good friends back home, Will and Clay, they um, their mom somehow got tickets to like, her company worked with the Rangers, I guess partnered with them or something, mm-hmm. or somehow they always had suites. And they always had like right behind the net. Oh, that's and crazy. so I remember one time we went, we were right behind the net. We were legit, I think two rows from like actual um, what's it called? Just like floor level, right? Because right. like, yeah, yeah. You have your first two rows are for like celebrities and stuff like that, yeah. and that's basically level with the ground. Yeah. And then there's like a little step up, and then you're like general seating, but that's expensive seating. And so yeah. we sat. We were like two rows behind that first initial two rows, and Pudge was sitting there, dude. What? It was crazy. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, God, I gotta, I gotta do so. I gotta get this guy's attention. I gotta do something. Yeah. And um man, and that was when Adrian Beltre was still playing. And really? some happened where like a ball, a foul ball got tipped to him because he was uh warming up, yeah, about to be up at bat, and he got the ball and I looked up, I was like, like throw it to me. <laughs> like I was like motioning to throw yeah. it to me. And he looked up at the net and then he threw it and it was short. And Pudge caught it. Oh, man. And I was like, okay, like what's going to happen? <laughs> Pudge pulls out a marker, signs it, turns around, 
and gives it to the kid next to us. No. I was like, oh my gosh, you're lucky you're a kid, uh, man. I know. That's, oh. that's always the hardest thing now is like, dude. I think I got one ball when I was a kid. Yeah. But like now it's so hard to do because like they just always want to give them to the kids. I'm yeah. like, hey, bro, like I want one too. Dude, I know. I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> like, give me one of them things. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember I went to another game where it was the game where Rugnet of Door punched. Uh, but oh, you were at that I game. I was at that game, oh, bro. Man. He punched him right in the jaw. It was the craziest thing. The crowd erupted. <sighs> we were like, we weren't doing that good that game. Yeah, it was. It was like a. It was a close game. It was but close. It, yeah, but we were like the the Rangers just weren't playing that good. And yeah. What's his name? What's his first name? Which Runa or I don't know how to say Batista. It. Oh, Jose Batista. It's Jose. Okay, yeah. so Jose Batista. Um, was on second, right? Or was he on short? He was, and no, he, he was on first. And so the play, like, it was a... Who slid? Jose Batista okay, slid so he just into hit Odor. It. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And it was like kind of like a dirty slide, or at least Odor thought it was. And so, oh, no, it was. <laughs> yeah. So they started pushing, <laughs> and then he just socked him right in the jaw. And there wasn't too many people there, but the stadium erupted, dude. Oh, I'm sure. It was so freaking cool. And I was like, let's go. Like, we were <laughs> yeah. in the nosebleeds. Fight night. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's go. Mom, did you see that? She was like, yeah. It was so freaking cool, man. Yeah. There's just nothing like a baseball game, though. Everyone, see, everyone goes to the game kind of hoping there's going to be a brawl. <laughs> <laughs> like they're always fun to watch when like stuff actually happens. Probably my favorite one. Oh, I always forget the guy's name. Oh, he's like this big lefty pitcher for the Reds. Um, gosh, I, I can't remember his name, but I just remember like there was one. They were like chirping at him the whole, or they weren't chirping at him. They were chirping at the, like the guy that was pitching before him the whole game, mm-hmm. and like they were chirping at everybody on the Reds team. And he finally gets like he gets pulled in the pitch, and he's throwing. They're like still chirping. On it. Probably there was like three or four pitches, mm-hmm. and basically just calls the like calls time, gets the coach to come out there. He's like kind of like bowing up to the dugout, and of course they're still chirping at him. Coach gets out there. You can kind of see him, uh, like kind of cover his mouth so he can't really say it, but. His body language, basically, he's just like, "Hey, coach, I'm about to go fight them. Like, yeah. get somebody else to come pitch. Like, I'm, I'm like, Peru about to go fight them." And I think it was uh, John Boy, you know, that oh, guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he did like a breakdown. It's it's really funny if you want to go watch it. Um, like he's like, "I'm gonna go fight him." The coach is like, "Really? You're gonna fight him?" He's like, "Yeah." And so you kind of just see him turn around to the dugout. He's like, "Hey, get somebody throwing." And then so he basically just like hands up the ball, taps him on the butt, and just literally just takes off at the the, the other team's dugout. And of course, at this time, like I think this dude's like six five. Oh my god! And like just ripped. And so like you see this big guy coming at you like that, you're like, what the hell? like? What do I do? <laughs> and so like, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa! And then he just comes in flying, just hammering, throw like punches, and it was probably one of the craziest ones I've ever seen, just on TV. But like still, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. You always gotta hope this gonna happen in the <laughs> game you go to. <laughs> so you've been, at least according to your social media, you've been traveling a lot. Yeah. Um, that's kind of part of, <laughs> I got to give credit to my girlfriend. She's been a big traveler ever since she was able to. And so mm-hmm. she's kind of been able to expand my horizons on the traveling aspect of things. That's awesome. Yeah. So it, it's, it's been a cool part of our relationship. I think, um, I mean, before we started dating, I had only been to a couple places, like only been on a plane three times, I think. And so mm-hmm. Ever since we started, dating, I've doubled that now, and we've gone to some cool places and gotten to go around some places I probably wouldn't have gone to. So, have you ever gone out of the country? Uh, we went to Mexico, oh, uh, Mexico, to Cabo. Yeah, so I mean that was the only one, but I mean we have plans to go to uh, was it France? She's done. She did. Uh, was it studying abroad over there? And so she has like a family that she can stay with and stuff. So we once like COVID yeah ends and stuff, we're gonna go hang out over there. Cause she has like a friend, um, they're like the same age. And so like they became really close and she was staying over there and oh, like freaking awesome. she would come over here every once in a while. So they've like been close for a long time. And so how crazy is that? I know. Right. So it was like, that's kind of cool. I want to go to France. Yeah. <laughs> it works out. R- Randomly Taylor just brought up France. She like sent me an airplane ticket thing. She's like, yeah, that's I mean, it. they're going to be cheap right now, but it's like, yeah. they're still kind of close. So it's, it's not really mm-hmm. going into anything too fun. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I think the only place I've been that's, like out of the north, I've been in California. I've been just in mm-hmm. state, and we're taking a trip to Hawaii uh, right. uh, in May. I think you can consider that overseas. I know it's yeah. like it's like the, the states, but it's like yeah. it's out away from everything. It's in this. It's technically the states, but it's not the states. Yeah, too. yeah. Which is so strange, but 
You ever been? No. So I've never been like that far west. Yeah. Um, I think because I just got back from Las Vegas last weekend, and like that was the farthest west I've ever been. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so that that was a fun trip though. And then so I've been That's to cool. Vegas. I've gone to Keystone in Colorado. Went up to New York for a little bit, and then uh, oh, that's right. yeah. just kind of all around Florida, and then South Carolina. South Carolina. I was. Yeah. I've been in North Carolina. Yeah. For work, but it was still cool. Um, we got like an Airbnb, maybe. I guess it's called Uptown. Right. I don't know why. It, I don't know why, <laughs> but it's yeah. called Uptown, and we were like, I think, seven minute walk mm-hmm. from Uptown. And so at night I would, we would do our, you know, photo shoots during the day. And then at night I would walk and I would just go chill at the bars and go see the scenery by myself. It was freaking cool. Super different though. It would have been cool to have like somebody there with me, but like the boss I was with was just like, no, I'm going to chill in like, like, go do your thing. (laughs) And I was like, it was a cool opportunity, but it wasn't super fun just because I was like, didn't have a car. I didn't really like Uber. I didn't want to Uber or anything, but it was still cool. But I've been to North Carolina. I've been to, you know, like Kansas. Yeah, just like random places. Oklahoma. Yeah, like. Yeah, no, I think I like I've gone to a couple other states, but it's like it wasn't anything. No, like no, notable. Yeah, like I went to Tennessee for we went to Memphis for like a we had a like a tournament there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that was cool, but like most of it we were just playing baseball, so I wasn't like going right. around and seeing the city and everything. But I feel that. Um, and then oh, and of course went to Atlanta. Uh. I went there with my girlfriend. That's where her mom lives. So, so you know, like the the popular street that are like it's all the songs like Peach Street or yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So that's where her mom, like her mom, lives on that street, no which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I was like, that's so weird. But it's like it's not like downtown Peach Street. It's like a little bit further, like yeah. the extension of it. Wow, that's freaking cool. Yeah. And so that was kind of cool to go. Um, but actually, so when we went to South Carolina, I actually went there to play baseball. So we went for like a like a summer league. Thing. so it was just like the month of june but so the year i went um was the same year that coastal carolina won the national championship that year <laughs> wow and so their like from where we were staying their school was like 10 to 15 minutes away what and so like they were playing at the same time we were there and so like when they were playing like we would go to like the bars and stuff that were like down like by like their school and the atmosphere was just crazy. Oh, like that's awesome. Yeah, I have so many like experiences, like memories from being down there. Like mm-hmm. it was so much fun. That's like, super cool. Just the timing of it all. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, the only experience I have similar to that is like t- when Texas Tech went to the national championship. Oh yeah. It, I mean, that was just in Lubbock. Yeah. But it got freaking crazy. I'm like, sure. People were th- legit on Broadway, which is like the bar street. Mm-hmm. They were flipping cars over, like oh my God. This, all the students <laughs> ran out into the street and they were just going crazy. I think a car got lit on fire. That's it's crazy. Nuts. I don't, I don't why would you even do that? I don't even know. I don't, I don't know, know why that's fun, but it just really just goes to show you the kind of people that go to Texas Tech. Yeah, it freaking lunatics. But yeah. I love, I love every single one of them. We were me and my roommate Brendan were just chilling at the house and we were mm-hmm. watching it on Twitter or something. Somehow it yeah. was like we were able to watch it on Twitter or keep like watch updates. Right. And, uh, we were like, should we go? Should we go? And then it got too like rowdy. People started flipping cars and we were like, ah, we'll, no. just, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll just stay back for this one. Yeah. But it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, have you ever been to, you never been to California? No, so I've never been to California. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've been telling Daniel next time he goes down, we gotta, he's gonna let me know so we can go with y'all. Yeah. Dude, that'd be freaking cool. Um, Adrian goes there for work sometimes. Yeah, that man's flying everywhere. I don't know where he's going. <laughs> he's everywhere at all times. Uh, Wex is what we call him around these parts. But we, yeah, he, that makes sense. <laughs> he, dude, he, he was like, dude, next time I go to San Fran, come with me. And I was like, no, actually, I said that to him. I was like, dude, next time you go to San Fran, let me come with you. Yeah, because he just goes for work for like a couple of days and yeah. like you know work. It's all paid for. So I'm like, dude, let me, I'll buy my own ticket. Just let me stay in your hotel and yeah. I'll just explore while you're working. And he's like, all right, so maybe we can get like a, a group or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> so it's like, hey, I'm going to need a three bed, <laughs> three bedroom uh, like, suite. Just like, <laughs> I just need it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just in case. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited for Hawaii, man. I'm yeah. I, 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 it should be a fun trip. It's going to so. be crazy. I mean, not like in a weird way or like a party way, but. I've never been yeah. 
I, first of all, I get super motion sick. And so I'm a little worried about the flight and the traveling. Do you I've, fly a lot? At I've, no, not a lot. I've flown a couple of times, mm-hmm. like a handful of times, but um, it's super spaced out. And so whenever I was younger, I would fly. I remember getting like motion sick. And so I would just go to sleep. I can sleep yeah. anywhere. And so I would just sleep on the plane. And so mm-hmm. uh, Vegas is a, like the place I, I've flown to the most, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Cause my grandma lives like right on the outskirts and oh, okay so yeah. i've been there quite a few times but uh dude oh my gosh i cannot handle like motion like that it just really? i bought these funny looking glasses um <laughs> taylor sent me this instagram thing I, I don't know if you know this but my brother and my and taylor they both follow these accounts that are like uh, amazon hacks and so these people will basically <laughs> find items on amazon that are like potentially valuable or useful to you yeah and they'll just kind of review them and so they sent <laughs> me one it was like a uh, motion sickness hack and it's goggles it's basically looks like a pair of goggles right they're like right. legit circular like lenses but in the middle there's no actual lens right and then on the rim of that it looks like a level you know how when you have a level there's yeah. liquid in there well, there's liquid. There's an actual blue liquid in there, and it sits level like a, it's supposed to simulate the horizon. And so, you have these things on. You have the horizon in your peripheral view, and there's circles here and there's circles here, what? all with the blue liquid. And so, like when you move, that liquid moves, and it's supposed to somehow connect your your equilibrium to your your vision, which is why your motion sickness occurs is because you're thrown off and right. like you're moving all the time. Your equilibrium is thrown off. And then they say, people say to like, look at the horizon. Like if you've ever been on a boat, yeah. they say, try to keep your eye on the horizon and it'll help. Yeah. And so that's essentially what these goggles do. And so huh. I'm just hoping they work. Cause we have like an 11 hour travel day. Wow. We have like, dude, we're, we're going to fly to Vegas and then we're going to fly to California and then we're going to fly to Hawaii. And it's a, it's like that's a, a long flight. It's a five hour flight to Hawaii, but yeah. like, you know, we have like a two hour flight and then like an hour and a half flight and then that five hour flight. Yeah. And like we're leaving at Austin at 7:30 a.m., and we're getting to Hawaii at 1:30 in the afternoon. Wow! Because the time difference. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's so weird. It to doesn't think even about, yeah. make sense. We're gonna be traveling for 11 hours, but get there in the middle of the day, yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna have the rest of the day to do whatever. I mean, so that like throw up. that kind of happened to me. So we were in Vegas. Like you're in Vegas, you're not gonna go to sleep very early. <laughs> yeah. Like I think pretty much every night we were there, we didn't go to bed till like 4 a.m. And so we get back when we finally came back i was like it was like 12 o'clock and i was like it's kind of about time i normally start getting tired oh wait i'm right. tired yeah <laughs> i was like what like what's happening and then it gets the two and then like okay that's why i'm starting to get tired because it's like the time difference yeah is about the same it was, it was just weird like, yeah super strange how that yeah. works man i can't believe there's you know like comedians and like bands they travel all the time all across the country sometimes yeah out of they're it. on their own time so <laughs> dude i don't know how they do that I, i've heard that working out like right when you land helps uh kind of jump start your body back into like a rhythm that makes sense because you're like super fatigued and tired but like if you can just kind of get your body moving and rolling then yeah it's supposed to just i guess shock your body back into mm-hmm. normal stuff yeah quote unquote but so that's the plan when i get there i'm gonna we're gonna like get our uber or our car to get our actual rental car yeah and then we're gonna try to find our hotel and work out like immediately because I'm going to be dead. I want to be <laughs> sick to my stomach. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to have to pop some pop some pills. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've broken. I've broken. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take some drama, mean, dude. <laughs> um, Jax, let's wrap this thing up, dude. All right. We're, uh, we're at a good point where we can stop, man. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. It's fun. <laughs> Is it... You know how long we've been doing this? It's like for almost... We started at like 12.45, so like over an hour. Yeah. It's, it's been over an hour and went by super quick. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's nuts. This thing is going to be crazy. But you have a shoot tonight with Daniel, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm um, for that. Check, up, check out Jackson on his Instagram. Go ahead and shout out your socials, bro. Uh, my na- So my last name is Godoy. It's G-O-D-O-Y. You just basically spell that backwards. It's Yodog. So all my all my ads are at Yodog underscore Jax. It's J A X. So Yodog Jax. At Yodog Jax, baby. Yeah. Just on, on Call of Duty too. So hit him up if you play COD. <laughs> Actually, don't because we already got a squad. Yeah, yeah. We don't need anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, man. thank you, man. <laughs>